Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board for February 15th, the year 2000. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting of December 21st, 1999. Any comments or motions? <coughs> so moved. May I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Mark. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Leslie, if you can note, the new members did not vote because they were not on the board previous to January 1st. Correspondence received this week. DeMille versus the Town of Cape Elizabeth, motion to reconsider decision. Planning Board Activity Report for the year 1999. Zoning News, December 1999. The report on trees on Main Street, winter 1999. A report on markets for traditional neighborhoods, August 1999. The planning board goals, which were discussed at our last workshop for the year 2000. And corresponding concerning a historic preservation training workshop to be held in Lewiston. Any comments from the board regarding correspondence? Hearing none, before we go on to the first item on the agenda, the planning board has a little bit of housekeeping to do as far as electing officers for the year 2000. Is there any discussion or nominations from board members? Perhaps we should first discuss the position of chair, and then we'll go on to co-chair. Mr. Parkhurst? I'd like to no nominate uh, the present chair, Peter Carter, to uh, fill the, the chair position for the coming year. Second. Thank you, David. Any further nominations from the floor? <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor of the nomination of Peter Carter for chair of the planning board for the year 2000, please raise your right hand. It's unanimous. I did not vote. <laughs> Concerning the position of co-chair, is there any discussion? Vice chair. Any discussion or nominations from the board? Steve? I'd like to nominate David Griffin for, to be vice chair for the uh, fiscal year 2000. I'll second that. Thank you, Mark. Any further nominations or discussions? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Congratulations. Now, yeah, the applicant for Hemlock Hill. Um, Mr. Chair, I have to yes. excuse myself for this particular item. Thank you, Steve. Mark is stepping down. <clears throat> Good evening, and thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, my name is Owens McCullough. I'm a civil engineer with the firm of Sebago Technics here tonight on behalf of the Fitzpatrick Associates. Uh, with me is Kelly and Joel Fitzpatrick and also Sally Daggett from uh, Jensen, Barrett, Gardner, and Henry. Uh, we're before you tonight uh, for an amended subdivision plan uh, for your review and consideration. Uh, the amended plan really deflects uh, some de minimis changes to the property lines of lot 7, 10, and 11, which are shown on the uh, presentation board here. And I'll turn it just a little bit. Uh, basically, uh, what has transpired since this project was originally approved in uh, April of uh, 1998, uh, a lawsuit was filed with uh, Maine Superior Court, and it named two items, uh, road standards and the grandfathering status for the subdivision lots. And uh, the court decision of December 21st, 1999, which I believe was passed out in your packets as part of your uh, review, and also I think we discussed it briefly at the workshop meeting when we were before you on January 4th, uh, indicated that the courts upheld the uh, uh, findings of the planning board uh, concerning the road standards and the grandfathering status. However, the courts did note some uh, minor uh, inconsistencies in the plan concerning lots 10, 11, and 7, which had to do with the configuration of the lot uh, in order to uphold that grandfathering uh, status. 
and as a result that was remanded back to the planning board which is why we're here tonight uh, to correct those lot changes and bring them into compliance uh, with the original configuration uh, of those lots and to be consistent with the court decision and if I can walk over to the board I'll try to make sure I speak loud enough the green represents the areas uh, that we did make changes to there was a right-of-way that on the original subdivision between lot 7 and the land that's going to be offered to the town of Cape Elizabeth is open space. This right-of-way was included in lot 7 and the courts decided that it shouldn't be. The lot 7 needed to be as the original configuration. As a result, we revised the plan to give that land area to the town, which raises the town open space area to approximately 17,177 square feet. Uh, Joel Fitzpatrick just went to the council meeting last night because procedurally he needs to get, and Maureen, if you can help me out, I believe it's, um, what's Conditional the, municipal approval. Thank you. And uh, he did do that last night, and I believe the board, uh, the council voted favorably to grant that conditional uh, municipal approval for that. The other change is on lot 10 and 11, a very small strip of land along here needed to be reconfigured to match the original configuration of the lots. That little change in land, the green strip you see in there, would be become uh, part of the right-of-way. And I did highlight lot 12 because uh, lot 12 um, in the uh, court order mentioned uh, that the square footage of the lot was off by one square foot, which had to do with rounding of the mathematical computations of the lot. But we have even fixed that one, too, to be exactly per the uh, original approved subdivision plan. So we're here tonight to ask the board's consideration for uh, approval of this amended subdivision plan so that we can be consistent with the court decision and uh, move forward with the project. Um, with that said, I'd be glad to try to answer any other questions. Um, Joel or Sally Daggett's here. Um, they'd be glad to answer any questions too. Thank you. Thank you. Before we return to questions to the applicant, Maureen, is there anything you need to add? Um, I just want to point out that on the podium this evening, I think you all received, I hope we all received. You only received. Me, okay. <laughs> on the podium this evening um, is a memo from the manager to the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board regarding conditional acceptance of lot at Hemlock Hill Road dated February 15, 2000. This is to confirm that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council has voted to conditionally accept the 17,170 square foot lot that Fitzpatrick Associates is offering to the Town of Cape Elizabeth as part of the Hemlock Hill subdivision. This conditional acceptance amends the earlier conditional acceptance of the proposed public road and public sewer that will be built as part of the subdivision plan. Thank you. Any further comments from the Planning Office? Questions of the applicant by board members? I'm waiting because everybody's carefully studying their plans. I understand. <laughs> <clears throat> I should mention while the board's looking at the plans that uh, we did meet with the town engineer and just make sure that that didn't affect anything from the engineering viewpoint he did provide uh, Maureen with a response that the plan was fine. I see him back there tonight. <laughs> Does the board member do the board members need more time to consider anything? No. Right. Okay. Chair is willing to entertain a motion. David, do you have a question? Could I make a motion? Mm hmm Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Fitzpatrick Associates is requesting amendments to the previously approved Hemlock Hill subdivision, which requires review under Section 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivision plans. The applicant is proposing to restore the original lot lines for lot 7, 10, and 11 to comply with the main Supreme Court division or decision, civil docket number AP99-45. The application subsequently 
well, substantially complies with Section 16-2-5 amendments to the previously approved subdivision plans. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for amendments to the previous, previously approved Hemlock Hill subdivision located at the end of Hemlock Hill Road and Woodcrest Road to restore the original lot lines for lot 7, 10, and 11 be approved. Motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second the motion, the Chair. Thank you, Mark. Further discussion by board members? Another question. We, was, we have a problem when uh, we were going to have a public hearing. We can't make the motion until there's a okay. public hearing. In order to move this application along, we scheduled both <clears throat> the application and a public hearing for the same evening, so I'm just going to table the motion for the time being. There is now a public hearing open on this matter. Anybody who wishes to care to speak, if you just approach the podium, let us know who you are and where you reside. We'd be happy to hear your comments. The public hearing is now open. Once again, the mad rush to the podium. Seeing that there's no one who cares to speak in this matter, the public hearing is now closed. Further comments regarding the motion that was just made and seconded? Hearing none, those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. for just a moment while the next applicant puts up their visual aids on the board. Please take the floor and explain your application for us, please. Thank you. Again, I'm Craig Chapman's representing Carmen Chapman's owner of lot U12, lot 74B. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the board for allowing me to table this issue from the December 21st meeting. And for the benefit of the two new board members, I'd like to briefly recap uh, what's transpired. Uh, lot 74B is a, a buildable lot of record, a vacant lot, non-conforming lot. There's a 20-foot wide access way that currently provides access to two houses. Um, my original intent was to extend this access way to provide access to the vacant lot. This is off Pilot Point Road. Uh, When I first approached the board, uh, before approaching the board formally, I discussed this issue with all of the neighbors and the abutters of the property. Uh, the owners of the two property that abut the extension of this platted right-of-way, 
to the lot uh, requested that we look at an alternate approach to the lot. Uh, and my first formal submission to the board was down a 20-foot wide easement on lot 92, which is uh, uh, the abutter's property uh, adjacent to the lot. Uh, because of the grade in this area and the 20-foot easement provided and the location of the turnaround, uh, uh, this proved to some difficulties with the board. I reapproached uh, uh, the issue and submitted second set of plans extending this platted right of way as platted on the subdivision plans to the lot. This proved somewhat unacceptable to the abutters in this area. So after extensive discussions, uh, we now present to you the third set of plans, uh, and that is the submission as you have it with a 30-foot easement down the sideline of lot 92 and the turnaround in the location as shown here. Uh, this current uh, presentation or application plan uh, does two things. It fully uh, satisfies all standards for a private access way and at the same time it uh, uh, obtains the uh, uh, endorsement of the abutters. So I'll bring this to you meeting standards and without dispute. Uh, go down the standard requirements. This is a single lot for one dwelling. There's a 30-foot wide right-of-way provided down the sideline of Lot 92. It intersects the existing 20-foot wide planted right-of-way. At this point, Lot 95, the owner of Lot 95, is providing a 10-foot wide grading easement so that the road in this area is built within a 30-foot wide right-of-way. So the full extent of the uh, private access way and turnaround is built within a 30-foot wide dedicated right-of-way as required by the town standards. Uh, issues that were brought up by the uh, uh, review letter from Oast Associate, one of which was uh, the private access way cross section, uh, the gravel, gravel specifications for the sub base is shown on the plan. Uh, they requested that I add the uh, uh, MDOT specifications for the crushed gravel layer. This isn't listed in the standards, but I'll be happy to uh, add that to the plan. Uh, the riprap uh, detail is described here. Uh, my understanding that the inlet and the outlet will both be the same. There's a 14-foot wide travel way, which is shown here in yellow, and the turnaround. The first 50 feet of this per road standards will be paid. In practicality, probably the entire area will be paid ultimately. Uh, gutter drainage is shown in this area down both sides. Uh, this road in this section will do little, if any, diversion of the water flow. This is a general gully that flows right through here. So water at this point flows this way. Water at this point flows this way toward the midline of the gully. So this road is, is running in the direction of water flow. So the road itself will not divert or change any water direction here. Water naturally flows in this area. The, the one place that the road will affect the water flow is at the low point, and that's where we've installed the 
culvert, 12 inch culvert as designed. The turnaround, um, originally we had it at the bottom, I met of the lot, the lower area of the lot. I met with Fire Chief McGoldrick and we discussed and uh, reviewed the plan, the turnaround in this area. We felt that this would be more acceptable for emergency vehicles to access this property. The general <coughs> entrance into Shore Acres is from Trundy down Katahdin Road, which runs directly into the private access, what proposed private access way, with the turnaround being at the top of the lot. I agree that the fire chief's request to uh, design in any permanent dwelling a residential sprinkler system, and that's noted as note number seven on the plans. Any permanent dwelling constructed on this property will include a residential sprinkler system approved by the Cape Elizabeth Fire Chief. Uh, with this addition and the location of this turnaround, uh, Fire Chief McGoldrick uh, apparently is comfortable with, with the design as presented. Site distances are at this location or in excess of the criteria in both directions. Uh, again, this private access way is service, serving one lot with one dwelling, one primary dwelling. Sewage disposal will be through a pump force main underlying the road. It will tie into the existing sewer line on Pilot Point Road. Next water will be obtained from tying into the existing water line on Islet Point. All utilities will be buried underneath the road at this point. The building envelope is shown by the hatched line meeting the uh, setbacks. There's currently a maintenance agreement on file with the town planner. Uh, that maintenance agreement does not specifically address these plans. What I would like to do uh, is have the, the current maintenance agreement amended. I, I think that the appropriate thing is once these plans are approved, these plans will be referenced in the maintenance agreement uh, to cover this private access way. So I, I fully agree the town planner's recommendation that uh, uh, the current maintenance agreement be specifically tied to the approved plans for the private access way. Thank you. If any questions? Any comments from the town planner? I just want to point out to the board that both the uh, fire chief and the town engineer are in the audience tonight, so there's a unique opportunity to uh, see if they have any comments to uh, <coughs> add to this project. After hearing from Mr. Chapman, does the fire chief or the town engineer have any comments they'd like to add? Chief, just so we can have it on the public record, would you come to the podium? I know you look very comfortable, but... <laughs> I think we, we all had uh, some concerns originally when the uh, fire lane, so to speak, came around to the front of the building because of the angle that we were working with. Uh, and working with uh, Jay, uh, we put the turnaround at the top, and he's agreed to put a sprinkler system in the building, which thereby pretty much eliminates the potential of any serious fire occurring. And so we need just limited access to the building at that point. And I wholeheartedly agree with what he's done here. Thank you, Chief. Any questions of the Chief and board members? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yeah. John, go right ahead. Question, Chief. So, so you're saying that the turnaround there is sufficient only if there's uh, sprinkler protection in the house at all times? That's correct. Thank you, Chief. Steve? Uh, 
Hi, I'm Steve Harding, I'm a town engineer. I work for Oates Associates. Uh, first off, I'd just like to say this plan is, is, I think, a significant improvement over the previous two because of the 30-foot right-of-way that resolved a lot of the original comments that we had. Uh, in looking at this, the, the major things that we were concerned of, one, um, coming down the road here with this ditch, we want to make sure that this culvert was low enough that it was going to capture all the water coming off the uh, driveway that's going to be constructed. I thought maybe there could be a berm or something around here to promote the water to go into the culvert rather than across the abutters property here. Uh, we were also concerned with the grade of the turnarounds. Uh, they're, they're rather steep. Uh, perhaps with the sprinkler system, that's not as important concern with this project, but just like the board to be aware of that for future projects, I wouldn't want to get in the practice of approving something like this and make this a, a precedent. And the third matter that we were concerned of is once the water comes down and, and goes through the culvert and goes down this gully, we're a little bit concerned as, as to what happens to it. Does it go over to this uh, abutters property or does it continue and head towards the ocean? And, and that has to do with where the eventual driveway is going to be. If, if it's going to be constructed along this edge, perhaps there's a way to promote the water to go towards the ocean before going on the abutters property and just to make sure that this turnaround area wasn't going to be used for vehicle parking. Those were the concerns that we had. The rest of the concerns in the letter are, are typical minor concerns that I'm sure we could address with Jay's uh, engineer. Thank you. Any questions of the town engineer? David? Yes, yeah, Steve, I had one question. To clarify, I think I understand what you're saying. The slope that you're concerned about is not the slope that's down in front of the guardrail, but that that as you come into the lot would be on the right-hand side where it drops down from, say, 95 feet to 91 feet? Yeah, that's, a, that's about an 8 to 10 percent slope, I think, uh, which is rather steep. Ideally, you'd like to have this be more of a planed area. Um, eight, 8 to 10 percent is, is really pushing it. So ideally, around 5 percent is a good emergency vehicle turnaround area, at least in my opinion. Uh, again, perhaps in the sprinkler system, it's not as pressing a concern as it might be for another project. Well, the question would be if, if the truck got down there and had to respond to some other place and get out of there quickly, that's probably where the concern is and had to turn around. The, the grade coming down the right-of-way seems to you don't you don't have any problem with that. Um, it, it's steep through a section through here, but the ordinance doesn't really address grades. It doesn't give a maximum grade. As a matter of fact, it says something about uh, maintaining the natural slope, I think, which, you know, it's a fairly st steep grade down through here, so I think the, the engineer, when he designed the roadway, pretty much was following the ordinance, at least my interpretation of it. John, you had a question? Uh, yeah, for Steve or the applicant, it, given the problems with the grades, I understand the chief to say that with the sprinkler system, it is not as much of a concern for fire response vehicles, but how about other emergency response vehicles? Can't. I would think uh, the steepness of the grade, it, it would depend. And during, the, during the summertime, perfect day, it's probably not that bad for an ambulance to get down through there. Uh, if it was a, a wintertime condition with a lot of ice, uh, it might be a different story. Um, take a shot at uh, put this. I, do, I have walked this property several times with a, a civil engineer that has worked with me on it and with the uh, excavation contractor. Uh, we feel like that the grade, the ultimate grade, will be uh, uh, sloped into each other from the relatively flat area to the steep to the flat, that we can even out this grade to have a fairly consistent grade throughout. In discussing this with Fire Chief McGoldrick, he was not so much concerned with the grade as he was with the transition between the two grades, uh, uh, with the concern being the, the rear platform of the ladder truck uh, not intersecting a, a, a relatively sharp grade transition. Uh, so it's our goal when this is the excavation work is done that we will make every effort uh, 
not simply from a board standpoint, but from a practical standpoint, to even this grade out throughout. May I just suggest, Mr. Chapman, when the road is about 80% complete, you might ask the chief to drive the ladder truck down there. He has done this, I know, in the past to make sure it's maneuverable in certain areas, and that's the quickest way to answer the question. Further comments from the board? Have you given any thought yet to the placement of the actual driveway on the property and whether that will interfere with the turnaround area? The, the, the apparent logical uh, approach to the property is down down the existing planted right of way. Uh, as I said, there there is a natural gully flowing through here. Uh, we walked this after uh, 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 rains, and there's very little apparent runoff ditching in this area. Uh, it's not obvious from what we could see by walking. So the driveway will skirt the edge of this right-of-way in this location, attempting to leave the existing natural terrain, the topography, the drainage terrain, pretty much as is. Your, the driveway will continue this way into the building, on the very into the building. Envelope. Would rescue trucks continue to follow the driveway typically down, or, I mean, is that still going to be too far a distance from the turnaround to have the turnaround be of any benefit to emergency access vehicles? It's been my experience that the turnaround are normally used just by the fire trucks. Okay. And the chief normally likes them close enough to the home that they can get the ladder to the building. And that's why the need for sprinklers here. Uh, under most occasions, the, the rescue vehicles, the ambulances, will use existing private driveways and get as close to the house as they can in order to carry the patient out. The, the turnaround overlaps the building envelope or approaches the corner of the, touches the corner of the building envelope in this point. <clears throat> Maureen, do you see a need for any further conditions to be added to this? That we're going to address this evening. The only thing you may want to do is uh, briefly review the town engineer's letter, which is attached, because one of the conditions specifically states that these plans would need to be revised based on his comments. <coughs> and he, asked, he has asked for some specific um, additional details on the plan. Steve, do you feel the need to have anything further added to the plan? I was just going through your checklist, and it feels like it's, it's been met at this time. Do you want a copy of your checklist? explanation on the turnaround and the applicant's explanation on the turnaround. Uh, basically the comments on the first page have been met. Um, I would say that the items on the back, I, I think uh, number six, 
uh, Jay indicated that he was going to add that to the plan. Uh, the riprap, riprap inlet on number seven, typically you don't use a, an outlet detail. This is a, a rather long, it's an eight foot wide by a ten foot wide area of riprap or stone. Typically you don't need that kind of protection on the inside and the only thing I would be concerned about is whether there's enough space there to provide that. If they want to do that and there's enough space, I don't see any reason why they can't. Um, it's just typically not seen. Uh, the trench detail, all I was looking for is a couple of dimensions just to uh, verify how deep the uh, water line was to be put in and how far away the sewer was going to be from that. And then the uh, information on the grading, I think, I think that can be taken care of fairly simply. It's just uh, there's not a lot of information for somebody to go out and build it. My concern here is if if it's built too high, then the grading is going to go off on the side of the property. Uh, right now it's shown that all the grading is kept within the uh, right-of-way that they have. So I would say on the second page, I would see those four items as being something that could be supplied as a condition. Okay. Other comments or questions from the board before I take this matter? Maureen, is the, is the maintenance agreement, it, one is on file and that's sufficient? And, yeah, that's and I, I, th I thought I had remembered to put an extra copy in your package in and a parent's package because it was submitted before you joined the Correct. board, but it is on file and the expect. I, I went through it and it doesn't say anything specifically about this plan and, and so it, it could be a very simple one line addition to the maintenance agreement that specifically references the plan that the board approves. Chair is willing to entertain a motion at this time. I notice you're scribbling, David, so we'll let you do it. Make a motion for the board to consider finding of fact, common chat mass <clears throat> is requesting a private access way permit for lot U12-74B located off Pilot Point Road, <coughs> which requires review under section 19-7-9 private access provisions. The town engineer has recommended that information be added to the plan that will assure that the private access way standards are met, specifically the trench detail, rip wrap on left inlet east side of trench, and the MDOT gravel specifications for private access way. A maintenance agreement is needed to assure that the private access way will be maintained in a manner that preserves access to the lot from town roads for emergency vehicles. The application substan substantially complies with the private access standards section 19-7-9. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Common chat mass for requesting a private access way permit for lot U12 74B located off Pilot Point Road be approved subject to the following conditions that the plans be revised per the town engineer's comments in his letter dated 2 8 2000 and submitted to the town planner for review that the maintenance agreement shall apply to the access way depicted on the plan submitted on 1-31-2000, that there be no building permit issued nor alteration, alteration of the site until the above conditions have been met. <clears throat> second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further comments or discussion from board members? Hearing none, those in favor of this proposal, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we adjourn, I just wanted to note it to those watching at home that we will be adjourning and we will be opening a workshop session of the planning board in the Jordan conference room behind me.
you for the comments from the board before I accept the motion to adjourn. Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? <coughs> so moved. Thank you. Mr. Griffin seconded it. Further discussion? All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.